good afternoon, dear viewers. I'm happy to welcome you to Sovelbash on the Sovelbash channel and on the construction site, which is called Design and Technological Bureau Sovelbash. This is Alexander Sudarev, and today in the video we will talk about what works are taking place on the 12th of February. As you can see yourself, there is partial installation of wall panels, decorative panels. They are becoming more and more numerous every day. It is already warm enough here. Works with the entrance group are being done. Let's go and see what it looks like. Note what is above our heads. The installation of the decorative rails, the decorative ceiling panels continue. And the lighting, which you can now see in this video, is temporary. It will be below the line of these decorative panels. And there is a lot of work going on. In this video we will try to cover different rooms, different premises. But it is worth emphasizing that, in fact, based on the pace of funding that came to Savalmash, we managed to significantly accelerate the implementation of work in various areas. And now we will just witness what we had time to do. Now, first floor. Doors have already been installed in all offices. Glass partitions have already been installed as well. And film has already been put on these glass partitions in some places, so that employees could feel as comfortable as possible in the work process. Now, speaking of the exhibition space, here we see a transparent room. And in fact, there was a dilemma here. How can we do it right? Either to close it, so that nothing could be seen, but on the other hand, it is an exhibition space, and everything should be visible there. Or leave it like that. But the right way out of the situation was found. A specialized film will be installed here, which will be darkened if necessary. It is the 21st century, new technologies. By the way, look. Please show the temporary location of our expert time program. Now the robot Alosha is working on cleaning up the territory to put things in order. So please leave a comment. Why is the robot called Alosha? Let's move on. The decorative panels are also being installed near the left group. We can see that the doors have already been leveled. The tiles have been brought to the lift doors. So it remains to close these decorative covers, remove the films of transportation, and there is not much work with lifts left. And again, please look. Sockets, switches are installed everywhere, fire cabinets are mounted. Not only are they mounted, but they are also connected. At the same time, not only cold water system is connected, but actually all the things are also connected to low current networks in order to ensure that the work in automatic mode is possible. Now, we have moved to the second floor of the administrative and utility building. We know that on the first floor workplaces are now formed, it is underway, offices are almost inhabited. On the second floor this work is still to be done. 
Now at last the interior partitions have been mounted. They are combined as glass and specialized panels together. They are already installed on the whole floor. In parallel with this, supply ventilation system is installed, as well as water supply is arranged, there are trays for wires, for low car networks as well. Of course, there are other works in progress as well, like fire safety system, dispatching system, and much more. And naturally, the internet as well. Now, let's go through and see what is going on. It will be the server room potentially here. Finishing work is being done. We can say that the building is being transformed and looks completely different already. Note that the ventilation system looks different in different rooms depending on the design decisions. And they are painted with the color that was chosen. floor of the administrative and utility building, preparation work is underway in order to carry out the installation of interior partitions, glass doors, and so on. However, the works are similar now. So we'll go to the third floor in our next video, I think, and we'll show you in detail what is going on there. And now let's look at the view from the mezzanine of the second floor. It used to look a bit different. And back to the question again. Why do we need those high ceilings? I never tire of talking about that. Well, actually it looks very impressive. That is, the number of engineering communications, networks, is growing every day. And at the current moment, you cannot just stand on the mezzanine of the second floor, but you can reach the pipe. <laughs> this actually brings a smile to my face. Because not so long ago, there was no such thing here, and the degree of friendliness of the building could not even be close to the level it is today. Because if we look closely, all the equipment that we see downstairs on the first floor workshop, well, in addition to the construction material, which is also very abundant here now, equipment is already appearing, milling machine, turning machine, two processing pieces of equipment, two large lasers, an injection molding machine for casting half parts of already impressive dimensions. And this is only the beginning. This is only a part of the equipment that our future design and engineering bureau will be equipped with. And also, I think it will be rather difficult to see here, but the guys will show you later. There are the communications that you can see under the ceiling namely ventilation systems. Some of them are already being thermally insulated. The networks that are for the supply ventilation system are being insulated, which will cool down and heat the room. That is, there will be thermoregulation. Those that remain without thermal insulation are smoke exhaust systems, which are also very important and necessary in the enterprise. You can also see quite a large number of bus bars, which we have already told you about many times. The bus bar line is necessary here, in order to be able to connect different machines, different equipment, depending on what production line will be built here. And there will be absolutely different production lines. That is, some of the machines will be located on a basic principle, you put them there, and they are in constant operation. This is what concerns the production of equipment, the production of tooling, prototypes, and so on. But the production lines that will consist of our own equipment, our own machine tools, which will potentially move to the customer's facilities, so what they will look like, we don't know today. Why? Because we have a certain idea 
of what we need and for what. But what kind of order will we have tomorrow? That depends on our potential customers. And we maybe ordered either an engine for a huge ship or an engine for an electric scooter. Well, I highly doubt the latter, but nevertheless, we should have the possibility to quickly prepare our premises to work with different products that will be in our portfolio. Let's move on. From another angle, you can see the work that is being done to insulate and install these ventilation structures. The big system is smoke extraction. It is also for smoke extraction. Looks like an octopus. In addition to thermal insulation of ventilation systems, thermal insulation of hot water supply systems is also performed. And the degree of readiness of hot water supply and cold water supply today is quite high. It's just left to connect the taps in the places of use. These are bathrooms, some places for eating, for dining, and so on. Generally, I think we can already understand that such systems with so many inlets and outlets will also allow us to make maximum use of all the possibilities that have been designed in the building. Over there, you can see the familiar door of the individual heating unit. But the Design and Technological Bureau is not only a bridge in heating units. Behind this door, there is a water treatment line, there are specialized filtering units and so on. Now we will not go in there, because the guys who are engaged in installation have decided to take a break. So later our cameraman will come in and film what it looks like, but we have quite a lot of such premises. So back to the question of what technical capabilities, means and capacities should have a facility that is suitable for the realization of the idea of the whole Salvage project. Well, this is now presented before your eyes. That is, there must be a building that is optimal in order to maintain it at an acceptable cost. The building must be located in a special zone in order to have tax benefits. Now, if we return directly to the building, it must have the good thermal regulation properties, dust extraction, smoke extraction, providing all the necessary facilities for connecting various schemes of production lines, serious preparation for access to electricity, the ability to accommodate unobstructed testing laboratory in the form, in the volume that are necessary for the realization of its certification, accreditation, and so on and so forth. Therefore, all these little things get together in a kind of a puzzle, which is necessary for solving the goals and objectives of the project. Without this, all of this would be impossible, because in order to create a new engine with new consumer qualities and properties that will surpass the analogs of competitors, well, you need power, you need funds, you need opportunities and capacities. I assure you that no one can build such an engine in a garage, in a workshop, in a country house. Yes, there is such a concept, which is modernization potential. And as any winder can change the winding to Slavyanka, it is possible. But to design new engines, to calculate them on special software and hardware complexes, to reproduce them then in iron with the help of manual labor, to make the necessary unique elements, which cannot be purchased from a factory, because no one makes them, to make specialized tooling for this purpose, for it to be of proper quality, accuracy, and so on. Well, it's very banal. If you order some tooling on 3D printers, you know there are tolerances, and there is such a thing as material shrinkage. So dimensions issue is quite problematic. If it is done by customers from the outside, it is not always possible to achieve an optimal ratio of price, quality, time, and accuracy of products. The same goes for laser equipment. The same goes for foundry equipment. In order to cast something, you need a mode. None of the external third-party customers will make a mode for you to make a small batch. 
which will cost a lot of money. So all these nuances are combined in this facility with certain efforts so that we could do our business. And at the output, again, one of the most important products of the Design and Technological Bureau, these are machines, this is equipment, these are production lines. We need all the scale to solve such tasks. And now let's continue our investigation. And by the way, ramp group, airlocks, walls, walls, walls again, pipes, walls. Are you aware that behind these walls there are rooms? And we're about to go up there. But before we pass by, let's see what is going on in the back of the building. Here some bathrooms and other rooms are being prepared. They are partially used as storage rooms. The installation, tiling has been performed, interior petitions have been made. Now, in order not to be unsubstantiated, let's open another door. Temporary offices have been set up. We see that the access has been prepared. It will probably be hard to see the work, but, well, the work continues. We can see quite a large amount of porous floor, tile glue. That is just an indication that a number of works in this area are ongoing. Let's go higher. Now we have gone up just to the room that was hidden from our gaze. This is where the warehouses and other rooms will be located. There are also office parts, low current systems are already being installed, fire extinguishing systems, fire alarm systems, and much more. We can also see that linoleum has already been installed, tile is laid, and in general, the work on these areas is starting to be more active. Not so long ago, there was still rough flooring here, and there were no tiles, no linoleum, or low voltage networks. Here the installation has just begun, so late in our next videos, we'll be able to show you the result. And we'll finish today's video with a simple shot. Trash bins and benches. This shows that the work is going on not only on the organization of the interior decoration of the Savalmash Design and Technological Bureau, but also on the arrangement of the external miraculous garden included in the project, which may someday be there and we'll be able to record it with our video cameras. Of course, I have embellished it a little bit. But actually, according to the project, we have quite comfortable, practical and cozy layout of adjacent territories. You have already seen the lawn in our past videos. It has been planted. Trees have been ordered. They will be planted as well. Resting places will also be installed and mounted. And, you know, trash bin, such a banal thing. You know, it is customary not to talk about such things. But these things are mandatory for comfortable rest and for keeping the territory clean, and this is so important. So work is carried out in winter, even on these areas. And why? Because we don't have much time left to hand over our facility to the State Commission and start putting it into operation. I think that everybody knows how to speed up this process without me. So thank you for your trust, thank you for your support, and see you soon.